In this video, you're going to learn everything you need to know to get started on Shadow Priest in Cata Classic. You're going to learn the best race, talents, glyphs, gear, professions, and of course, macros to get you instantly ahead of the competition. Okay, so before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Kata using our brand new SkillCapped add-on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at SkillCapped.com. We've got literally everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from rank one players, which will teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered and while everyone else is going to be slowly figuring everything out themselves, you can skip this process with SkillCat, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So let's kick things off at the character select screen where it's time to choose your race. As with most classes, human is going to be the best option if you're playing Alliance. The double damage trinket with human is simply too good to pass up, and this is because of Will to Survive, which allows you to break out of any crowd control on a two-minute cooldown. This means you can equip two damage trinkets instead of one, which can be used to snapshot your dots. Now, for Horde, you have two options to choose from. Your best option is Goblin. The goblin jump racial is the primary reason for this, as it can easily allow you to land fears or escape melee. Troll is going to be your other option if you want to play Horde, as it gives you access to the berserking racial, and this is going to increase your haste by 20% for 10 seconds, allowing you to get some pretty big damage. While Horde does have some solid options here, most Shadow Priests will find themselves on the Alliance side. Talents work slightly differently in Cataclysm, so let's break down everything that you need to know to get started. There's only one build worth playing as a Shadow Priest, and this build includes all of the essential Shadow Priest talents, such as Silence and Psychic Horror, which are absolutely necessary to land kills and close out your games. In fact, Silence is one of the strongest crowd controls in the entire game. Knowing how and when to use your CC is honestly crucial for climbing and is something we cover in our Shadow Priest course, so be sure to check it out after this. We only have room for two points in Improved Mind Blast, as our other talents are too important to drop. Improved Mind Blast provides a small healing reduction, which can be useful when playing with a class without a mortal strike, and the two points provides a high chance to proc this effect. If you're planning on being the sole source of healing in 2v2 though, then you can drop the points in the Discipline Tree to pick up Improved Renew, Empowered Healing, Desperate Prayer, and then Surge of Light in the Holy Tree. Now this is not recommended for 3v3 as Archangel is simply just way too powerful to pass up in the Disc Tree. Along with Talents, the Glyph system has changed a little bit in Cataclysm as well. Now you're going to have three additional Prime Glyph slots on top of Major and Minor. Your glyphs are fairly set in stone here, but there is one small adjustment you can make in the Prime Glyphs. Glyph of Shadow Word Death is an amazing glyph that's going to instantly reset the cooldown of death if it fails to kill a target that's below 25%. Glyph of Shadow Word Pain is a straightforward damage increase to our main dot. Glyph of Dispersion reduces the cooldown on our main defensive, and this can be swapped for Glyph of Power Word Shield if you don't anticipate being the kill target, although this is extremely rare. For your build, you have the same three major glyphs, Psychic Horror, Inner Fire, and Mass Dispel. Psychic Horror reduces the cooldown of one of our major CC abilities. This is going to be essential for having reliable kill setups. Inner Fire increases the armor provided, but we want to maintain this as it increases our spell power. Finally, we have Glyph of Mass Dispel. Since we're now the only DPS with a Magic Dispel, this is mandatory as this reduces the cast time of Mass Dispel by one second. Finally, our Minor Glyphs are not too important here, but they can have a slight impact on the game. Glyph of Fortitude reduces the mana cost of Power Word Fortitude. This can be good into teams with kind of a lot of purges. Glyph of Levitate removes the Reagent requirement. You're going to push this into Death Knights to juke their Dark Simulacrum. 
So this is a nice quality of life glyph. And finally, we have Glyph of Shadow Fiend. And this is going to give 5% mana back if Shadow Fiend dies early. This can be good since Shadow Fiend has relatively low health. All right, so next up, let's go over your best in slot gear for Season 9. First up, let's go over stat priority. You'll then want as much intellect as possible. You'll naturally acquire this through your gear, though. After that, highest priority is hitting the 4% hit cap. This ensures that your abilities do not miss. Nothing is more frustrating when you're about to win the game and then your killing blow just totally misses the target. The good news is that you don't really need to go out of your way to get hit since we get hit from spirit. You'll then need 195 spell penetration. This is going to ensure that your spells don't miss. After that, you'll want haste. Now, there's no specific breakpoint you're looking for here, but rather you want to stack this as high as humanly possible. You'll then want to get at least 3000 resilience, but we recommend closer to 3500 as this is going to help you survive enemy kill attempts. Crit and Mastery are relatively low value. In fact, you're going to end up reforging every single piece to haste that doesn't have haste on it. Before we show you your best in slot, be sure to check out our article site after the video for your pre-bis gear using the link in the description below. Now, let's take a look at what items you should aim to get as the season progresses. In Season 9, all of your best in slot gear will come from PvP with the exception of your trinket, although this too will be swapped out for a PvP trinket. Your main pieces will be the Vicious Gladiator's Investiture Set, which includes the Vicious Gladiator's Mooncloth Robe, Gloves, Helm, and Leggings. You'll also use the Vicious Gladiator's Satin Mantle, as this will provide us with some additional haste over the set piece. For your off pieces, you'll want Vicious Gladiator's Drape of Diffusion for our spell penetration. Your bracers will be Vicious Gladiator's Cuffs of Prowess, Vicious Gladiator's Cord of Cruelty in the Waste Slot, Finally, to round out our off pieces, you have Vicious Gladiator's Treads of Alacrity in the boot slot. For your weapons, you'll be using Vicious Gladiator's Spellblade in the main hand and Vicious Gladiator's Endgame in your off hand. The wand slot will be occupied by the Vicious Gladiator's Touch of Defeat. For your jewelry, you'll pick up the Vicious Gladiator's Pendant of Alacrity. For your rings, you'll want to grab the Vicious Gladiator's Band of Dominance and accuracy. This is where a majority of our hit is going to come from. Finally, for your trinkets, use the Vicious Gladiator's Medallion of Tenacity on the Horde. If you're Alliance, you're going to replace this with a Vicious Gladiator's Badge of Dominance. You'll then use the Dark Moon card Volcano. If you find yourself struggling to survive, you can drop this for the Vicious Gladiator's Insignia of Dominance. So, as mentioned, when it comes to reforging, your goal is to reforge everything, literally everything, to haste. This is your most valuable stat, and you simply just can't get enough of it. Okay, so before we continue, we have an exclusive skill cap tip to help you get started in Kata PvP, coming directly from our new classic course. Have you ever watched a Shadow Priest stream and wondered why on earth they always seem to be moving? Well, there's actually a very important purpose for this, and that's shadowy apparitions. If you've ever checked your damage breakdown after a game, you're going to notice that Shadowy Apparitions surprisingly makes up a large chunk of your consistent damage. And as we know, they spawn from our Shadow Word Pain. But did you know that while moving, you have a 60% increased chance to spawn them? It's pretty crazy, right? Well, there's a simple rule to play around this small fact to increase your damage, especially when you're being trained. If you're not casting, Keep moving. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Simple, yet surprisingly effective. If you want to learn more tips like these, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. With your gear sorted, let's get everything gemmed and enchanted. Your best enchants will not change as the expansion progresses. Your helmet enchant, Arcanum of Vicious Intellect, comes from PvP, so it's going to be relatively easy to obtain. Your second enchant is Greater Inscription of Vicious Intellect for your shoulders. This too comes from PvP. Then head to the Auction House where you'll then pick up the rest of your enchants. For the chest, you can either do Peerless Stats or Mighty Resilience. Mighty Resilience helps to increase your survivability, but in comps where you might not be the target, the extra damage from Peerless Stats will be beneficial. 
You'll then grab Mighty Intellect for your bracers, Haste for your gloves, Lava Walker for your boots. We recommend tailoring for your profession, which means your cloak will be enchanted with light weave embroidery. This is mandatory if you're really trying to push on Priest. For the remaining slots, embellish your legs with powerful ghostly spell thread, and then put Power Torrent on your main hand and Superior Intellect on your offhand. Finally, don't forget to get an Even Steel Belt Buckle for an extra gym slot. And speaking of which, let's get things gymmed. For your Meta Socket, you're going to be slotting in a Burning Shadow Spirit Diamond. This will provide you with some intellect and increase the amount of damage that your Critical Strikes deal. In your red slots, you have a couple of options here. You can use Brilliant Inferno Ruby for more damage, or you can use Willful Ember Topaz for a little more tankiness. In your blue slots, you need to be using Purified Demon's Eye. This gives us spirit for our hit, along with a little bit of intellect for damage. And then in yellow sockets, put three Mystic Chimera's Eye for more resilience and durability. Any remaining yellow slots can be slotted with Willful Ember Topaz. Professions will matter once more in Cataclysm, and there is a few choices for you. You're going to want to go Jewel Crafting and Tailoring. Your first default pick is Tailoring for Lightweave Embroidery. This enchant provides a massive spell power buff, which we can snapshot with our dots, and this can be crucial for landing kills during important windows, or we can save our CC for this proc. Jewel Crafting is our second pick. This is going to allow us to use the Chimera's Eye Gems. As we mentioned in our gearing guide, we'll use the Mystic Chimera's Eyes for more resilience, but you can go with the Brilliant Chimera's Eyes. This reduces our survivability quite a bit, but if you're confident you're not going to be targeted, then this can be a good option for some additional damage. You do have the option of going blacksmithing as an alternative, and this is going to allow you to add a socket to your bracer and gloves. It's technically slightly less stats in Season 9, but it will be more stats in the later seasons when we have access to epic gyms. Finally, let's wrap things up with every macro you'll need to be competitive in PvP. First up, you want focus macros for Silence, Psychic Horror, and Dispel Magic. These are your main forms of CC, so you want to be able to reliably and quickly CC the healer during your damage windows. Dispel Magic is good to remove important buffs such as Enervate. If you're looking to elevate your macros, you can take these and turn them into Arena 1-2-3 macros for Psychic Horror and Silence. This is going to give you the most control and speed if you can afford the keybind space. Now for your Shadow Fiend, you should have a macro that automatically makes your pet attack. This is going to ensure that it goes on the target that you want it to hit. You'll also want a macro to cancel your dispersion. You can't deal damage while dispersed, so once your healer has topped you off, then you can cancel this ability if it's safe to do so. Now, for your party macros, you'll want one for Leap of Faith, also referred to as Life Grip, and Fear Ward. This will allow you to quickly save your allies or prevent a fear. Now it's time for our damage macro. We simply want to pair Archangel with our Damage Trinket to maximize the amount of damage we deal during this window. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go though, be sure to check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you're gonna climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And, uh, well, if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.